So my doctor recommended Ozempic to me a few months ago. My doctor said, man, you so fat, I'm going to put you on Ozempic. Now, when I say that my doctor recommended Ozempic, he didn't prescribe it very specifically. I'm a veteran of the United States military. And when I was at the VA, my doctor said, well, the, the VA is not going to cover this drug. And so I would recommend it if you can afford it. I would say go find some Ozempic. I was offended. I was highly offended, number one. I didn't think I was that fat. I didn't think I was fat enough to take a needle and stick myself somewhere on my body to try to lose some weight. Hey, I, I'm an 80s baby, and so I grew up in the 90s with Richard Simmons and all these other fitness warriors, you know? <laughs> jazz size and jazz fingers. But I grew up with a diet pill. You take a pill to lose some weight. It's probably a very heavy stimulant, a Fedora, uh, some type of Xanax 3 stacker, something to get your heart pumping. It might even stop your heart. You're going to cardiac arrest. Lots of people died from these very powerful drugs. But now we fast forward to the future. And I never thought that the future was going to be like, so if you was a pill popper, that's one level of drug addict. But once you resort to taking a syringe and sticking it anywhere in your body, that's a whole different type of drug addict. Man, that's crazy. I never thought that we'd get to a place where if you got a little bit overweight that you'll just inject yourself with some type of drug. We don't even know what the consequences of these drugs are. In this modern time, we just accept anything, put whatever in our bodies, any type of poison in our bodies, except for doing the hard thing. What's the hard thing? When the doctor told me I was too fat, you got to understand how fat I was. I couldn't even walk right now. I'm out on this trail. And it's a rough trail, you know. It's, it's hiking, really. And so I'm out here, and you see the tall grass. You see the up and down uh, landscape. It's challenging. But a few months ago, I didn't have the physical ability to walk 100 yards. I felt pain in my back. I felt pain all in my plantar fascia. That's the bottom of my feet. I was in excruciating pain. It was unbearable. And so it took a long time for me to, to try to change my diet to get some of that weight off my ass so that I could move my feet and come and change my life. If you're in such a dire situation that you're willing to inject yourself with a powerful drug because you want to lose weight, I got to ask you. I need you to tell me. Why in the world won't you just get up and move your feet? Like I'm out here on the bayou and I want you to understand that once you come out here, you want to see something beautiful. You can come out here and you can just take a look at God and all the things that God made, all God's creation. Yeah, 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 yeah. The bayou can be kind of nasty. I'm not going to say that it isn't, but it's a challenge. You can challenge yourself to want to be better. Man, I got tired of being fat. I got tired of being in pain and being miserable. Hey, when I leave here, I got my hiking boots strapped up really tight. My feet might get a little bit wet. I got waterproof shoes. And it's going to be difficult, man. I might have soreness all over my body, but that's a good type of soreness. My body can heal from that. It's hard to heal from being fat. It's hard to get over uh, the inflammation and the aches and the pain. So I made a decision. I don't want to stick myself with no injectable. I don't want to just peel pop. I want some discipline. I want some control. I want to. I want to be in control of my life. I don't want Ozempic to be in. I don't want Ozempic to be in control of my life. If I get tongue tied, I'm thinking about you, and I want you to save your life in the comment section. Tell me, are you overweight? I was 257 pounds, and I lost well over 20 pounds. And so, what's your weight loss journey? What's your practices to lose weight? On top of me moving my feet, I know that it's calories in, calories out, but it's also work ethic. But when it comes to my diet, oh my God, I got to tell the truth. I got to tell the truth. Have you ever been to Whataburger? Whataburger is so delicious. Now, when I'm talking about Whataburger, I'm, I'm walking through a Whataburger right now. This grass is all up on me. Get off me, grass. Get off me. Stop tugging on me. Spiders and other insects they hang off the leaves and as you walk and they climb when you get on you I don't want no ticks. I don't want no Lyme disease <laughs> You don't have to go walk through the forest. You ain't got to be on the trail There's some concrete up there, but that concrete it does get kind of rough on your shins I don't want shin splints. I don't want achy feet. I want to be able to feel mother earth 
every crack crevice and cranny of this bad mother. Yeah. I want to feel my creator. This is important to me. And so when I come out here, I get to do a whole bunch of things. It's like, it's cathartic. I can scream. I can pray. I can shout. I can cry. <laughs> God, why don't you let me get so fat? That's where I was at. I got to weave right back in. And so I was, I was going somewhere. I was going to the hospital. I was going to the VA to uh, file a claim for disability. I was going for some type of test. And I saw Whataburger and I hadn't eaten all day. I'm practicing intermittent fasting and I'm like, man, I can't get to my uh, my green juice. I got a green shake and I chase my green shake with some fiber because I want to have a consistent stool. When you be eating a bunch of bull job, uh, you be having that watery junk. I, you don't want no watery stool. It'd be so nasty. <laughs> you want to be healthy. Uh, firmness, consistency. This is, what, this is what a healthy body looks like. Anyway, and so I get to Whataburger and I get me one, I think it's like a number five or something with the bacon and the one patty. And you know, you know for sure I got to get it water size with the big fries. And I did. And in my anticipation, they brought my food to me because in the water burger, you're having that wonderful service. When you eat inside, they bring it to your table and give you your fancy ketchup or your spicy ketchup. Y'all know the experience of going to water burger. Ain't no place like it unless you live in Texas. Yes. And after I took my very first bite of that burger, I was, I was disgusted with myself. I'm like, man, you've been doing all this work. You've been watching your calories. And now you think that you're giving yourself a treat. Hell no. I ain't giving myself a treat. That was counterproductive. I was working against my own best interest. And then I knew, I knew all that cheese and grease was going to make me, it was going to give me the runs like this whole runny water down here. <laughs> And so I made a decision to negatively impact my health because I had this desire inside of me. I, I, I love poison so much that I was willing to digest poison however however I get the poison. That was a sticky. Goodness gracious, man, that thing stuck me dead in my knee. Who knew that nature could be so dangerous? Mother nature is just like a woman, huh? She could be very vindictive when she get mad at you. In peaceful times, oh, it would be rainbows and sunshine. And when she get mad, it'd be like a hurricane. Until, hey, we just, I know, hey, God bless all the people that Hurricane Milton just hit. But in my time, we ain't named no hurricanes after no men. Everybody knew that hurricanes and bad weather was from the ferociousness of a mean, mean, vindictive woman. <laughs> you ain't gotta laugh, but it's still funny. Even with something that's disgusting, you can still find beauty in here. This is a pure, Pure sewer, you see the overpass, you see the sewer coming down. But even in the midst of shit, you still got life. Even in the midst of hard times, you can find something to be happy about. And so, when I when I knew that that burger was bad for me, I man, I finished it. I ate every last fry. I drank every last ounce of my sweet tea. And when it was done, I ain't feel good. Mentally, I didn't feel good. Emotionally, I didn't feel good. Physically, I felt like shit because I had defeated my own purpose. I went against the program. And now so many Americans, we're in such bad shape, they're willing to sacrifice our health for the perception of looking good. That's vanity. That's vanity. Don't just look good. Feel good. Talk good. Eat good. This is a fun fact. For every man that's fat right now, 25% of American men have ED. What's ED? Erectile dysfunction. Your tally whacker ain't working. Why isn't your tally whacker working? Because you're 25, you're 25 pounds overweight. You out of breath, you can't stroke. The average sexual session right now, it lasts for about seven minutes, less than seven minutes in all honesty. The report is three to four minutes of a sexual encounter. Dear women, how many women out there, if your man climb on top of you and pump, 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 pump it up for three to four minutes, how many of you women are satisfied? Y'all tell me in the comment section. Hey, tell your man, hey, you better go lose some weight, but you can't tell me to lose no weight. Do you know why? Because the average woman in America is also fat. 
oh shit it's a fat epidemic and so Pfizer and Merck and all these damn pharmaceutical companies they're excited because instead of getting that your ass up and coming out here on this path and doing the hard work and seeing the beautiful scenery your big fat butt would rather consume calories and after you consume calories have you seen the hunger games <laughs> them people ate so much that after they ate a whole bunch they drank that that, that juice that was the ipecac or something it made them throw up so they continue eating more so they can just be gluttons and gluttons and gluttons and i'm like yo tell your mouth to stop tell your stomach i want you to be healthy and then eat a balanced diet eat one meal two meals a day intermittent fasting that's my journey right now i'm doing intermittent fasting i go between 12 and 16 hours before i eat again i'm sharing this journey with you because i was out here last time i came out here with my children me and my children we walk every summer the last time i came out here with my children and my new baby i was laid out on the ground huffing and puffing wheezing and crying oh my back i was trying to figure out a way just to get back to the car and i know my children were disappointed in me I know that I was disappointed in me. And when I got to my doctor, my doctor told me that my health was so bad that he would prescribe or he recommended Ozempic to me. I was like, man, I'm not finna start sticking myself in no needle. I'm not, I'm not no, I'm not that far gone. If I'm gonna stick myself with a needle like that, hell I might as well have fun doing it too. It's called that hair on. <laughs> I might as well go on that dope trip, but I don't recommend that to nobody. I don't recommend no pills or no syringe to nobody. I recommend to you that you get up and get a thousand steps in, you eat less, you believe bigger, and watch how your life change. Watch how we can defeat fat because you're the greatest American alive. We, don't, we ain't fat no more.